Capricho. Welcome back, everybody, to the Cho Super Hyper Podcast. Woo! I am your host, co-host, co-friend, Super Blastex, and of course, joined by Toku Tony. Howdy! We are at the podcast where we discuss everything that happened last week or this past week on Superhero Time. Uh, we are a day late today. Uh, that's fine. We wanted to take a pause with everybody else. Uh, in the Togo community to basically stand together uh, and say watermelon emoji? I think so. I want to say the real thing, but I don't know if you get... You, we might get flagged if you say the real yeah, thing. So, if, if, you know what I mean when I say watermelon emoji? Just know that we're in I mean. support. We just can't say it. I don't, can't you say, I honestly, honestly, seriously don't know. Yeah, me neither. Um, but it has it has been a thing where like if you say something outspoken you do get kind of flagged yeah but you know you know what we mean yeah uh, so we took an extra day uh, to not post the episode um, but here we are we're back we're back yeah and uh, let's see usually if you don't know well first of course like comment subscribe all that good stuff uh, but if this is the first episode you listen to, uh, we do talk about uh, this past week's Common Rider and then Super Sentai. We sort of uh, go over the episode, see what it's about, and uh, how we feel about how the show and story are going. Um, and uh, before that, we actually talk about our week, how our week was and stuff. So mm-hmm. uh, we can get into that first. Toku Tony, how was your week this past week? Ooh, it was actually pretty surprisingly didn't have too much to do. Uh, this whole week since i wasn't on call you know i've been taking a break uh just be me at home relaxing like really trying to just stay in as much as i could uh and for that i didn't do anything from monday through friday yeah. but on saturday uh i went out with uh you and another friend of ours and our brother and we went to costco yeah to go shopping just like to hang out you know to have just be out of the house in that place we've never been before and apparently it was really nice apparently it's really nice and we went and it's uh, i mean you were there you can't say apparently <laughs> and I, I mean i liked it a lot never been to a costco you know we have sam's locally and it's sort of like that but it's way bigger way better i think uh we went to costco then we went to in and out after oh man i can't wait for california yeah and i wait for california yeah um yeah costco was a thing um on friday night i went out with some of my my uh co-workers and we were talking about what we we're gonna do this weekend and while i was there i got the text that we we're gonna go to costco saturday the next day yeah so i mentioned that and uh boy was i laughed at oh uh, yeah really by older people Heck than me. Yeah. even they knew that was but I made it. I made it for what I did on Sunday. So when we get to me, I'll talk about that. Heck yeah! Uh, what'd you do Sunday? So Sunday was basically just my day in. I haven't really um, been focusing on my own YouTube channel and stuff like that. So that was really a day for me to farm as much content as possible. And boy, did I! I posted four new videos on my YouTube channel, um, just of some random matches I had. It was us against another squad that we played against, uh, Tacos Over Vatos. But not uh tacos over vatos i'll i uh, have them added in one of my videos but uh them and their squad against me and my squad who are notoriously bad uh, but we did pretty good actually if you want to see the results we have three videos or i have three videos up on my channel and my latest one that i just uploaded is uh warzone resurgence which uh is really good you check it out we actually popped off but other than that, that was just all my Sunday, just playing COD all day. It was kind of disorienting. At the end of the day, I had a headache just from being at a desk all day, just looking yeah. into the screen. It kind of hurt my head a little bit, but yeah. I'm glad yeah. cause I got to farm I got to farm content. So that was good. And I had a good time doing it. Check out my channel. That's plug. Good. Seamless plug. Is it a seamless plug? Uh, shameless plug. 
but uh, before the podcast, uh, we go to the gym every day or Monday through Friday, and uh, I drink a Celsius during the workout, so it's just now hitting me. So I'm saying things before I think about them. It's yeah, this is the only time you've done that. Yeah, <laughs> that's just me. But it's no bueno. Uh, I don't know if you could hear or, or, or could tell, but I do have a stuffy nose. I believe I got sick over the weekend. Oh, no. Uh, it really was hitting me Sunday night. Mm-hmm. Uh, having said that, what I did on Sunday uh, that I alluded to earlier was uh, I went to a... It's called a K-pop store, but it definitely is m- way more than that. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was. It's called Violet. Uh, Violet K-pop, I believe, is what you search. Oh, okay, okay. On uh, on the Google, and I believe there's three here in Houston. Um, they've got so much official Pokemon merch. Oh it's wow! It's ridiculous. Uh, I took a couple pictures. Uh, I didn't get as many as I wanted. I didn't because I didn't think about showing it here, but I took a bunch of pictures of the Pokemon stuff because I was showing our brother a bunch of the Pokemon stuff. Uh, I got uh, between one and two twice album. I got a little photo card binder, little one. Uh, so Pokemon, uh, Pokemon blind boxes, yeah, and some Robins. Not, not, not really much, uh, but it was fun. It was a really fun time. We also went to a tea tea place, a tea shop, like a couple a uh, couple doors down, and I had boba, and I should take a picture of that too. But Ooh. I had a, uh, it was called a, uh, the place is the name of the place was Tea Time, and the bo the tea that I got or whatever mm-hmm. boba tea thing that I got was um, called Oreo cheese. Oh, gross. Boba. Oreo yes. cheese? Yeah, it tasted weird. But I finished it. It was okay. Nice. It, it was weird. It nice. was okay, but it was weird. Um, uh, the uh, One of my nieces... It was. I went to the store with my sister and her, her daughters. So, my nieces. Yeah. Uh, her favorite... One of her favorite flavors... Her favorite flavor is... Ube? Not ube. Taro. Taro, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, is that a flavor for... Or is it ube? Am I thinking of ube? Ube? Wait, I don't remember. But I do remember that it tastes funky. And she's the only one that likes it. Oh, no. Uh, Here's... I tell you, they had so many Pokemon That's blushes. a lot. That's uh, like a lot, dude. That's a giant Squirtle. Oh. As you can see. Look at Pikachu. Oh, nice. Gigantic. There's a little Lucario I see right there. Lugia, Lucario, right yeah. here. Perugia, Ninetales, Vulpix. These cool little Clefairies, Jigglypuffs, Nitar, mm-hmm. Obblefat, Pichu. So, so pretty. These, uh, these plushies, this guy. <laughs> oh, nice. Or... $44. Three dice. I'll tell you, these were official. Uh, and then, of course, every time we go to a Japanese Korean booth, uh, stand, store, whatever, try to find anything Common Rider or Sentai. Mm-hmm. And mission succeeded. Found this uh, Ben Presto. Ben Presto? Yeah, Ben Presto statue of uh, the dude from Shaman King. No. Uh, I'm very surprised that Shaman King's there at all. There was a bunch of Shaman King stuff there. That's crazy. A bunch. Uh, I know that's Yo's brother. What his name? Um, but yeah, jo- what is it, Joker? Yeah, Joker. 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 Then uh, I also saw some Ultramad stuff. I actually got us little U- Ultramad snacks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're like Oreo, uh, mini Oreo thing bites or mm-hmm. whatever. They're but really good. Ultraman is on. Oh, you had them already? Yeah. They're really good. I like them uh, a lot. Yeah, I just, you know, try to find Toku where I can. Um, yeah, check out this tour chick. $40. I don't remember how much this guy was, but he's adorable. <laughs> uh, socks. Socks will get you. Socks will get you. Omar likes socks, so I had to show him this. Yeah. Uh, is that wrong? 
possibly. There he goes, right there. Oh What's my that? god, it's it's tangerine. Tangerino. Tangerino. The jello. And Tan Tanchimaponko. And the this is actually the first picture uh -huh. I took. It looks like they were just that, right? But though he has a whole pupil and everything. That's There's crazy Iris. looking. Iris. Uh yeah. That was the first picture. I was like, okay, Omar's got to see this. Oh, I got to get a viral video of this. <laughs> and uh, I took that picture. I was like, you know what? I might as well take pictures of this whole place because this, or most of this place. I didn't take any pictures of the K-pop area. Mm -hmm. the other like Japanese knickknacks uh, and Korean knickknacks. Uh, but we do got to go sometime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you told uh, me about that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the best part. Uh, you remember the second hospital we went to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob, uh, -huh. uh, in Webster, uh, what was it called? Well, that sucks that I don't remember. We were there <laughs> every single day. Uh, uh, I couldn't remember the name, but but what's special about it? So, you remember we went down, you know, 45 and they got off and then turned that one street. It wasn't like a, a it was a light mm -hmm. to get actually and then get to the, the hospital. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, from the main road, you know, so freeway and then the main road. Uh -huh. From the main road, we turned. It's this place was in that uh, really complex. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Yeah, it was there the whole time. And we didn't even stop by. Not once did I ever think about going there. <laughs> or even like, I mean, of course. Uh, yeah. Last year would have been the year for me to actually like go there a bunch. Uh huh. And I know, you know. That's not at all a priority. That was not a priority at all. Jesus. It was just there. But it was, yeah. The universe forced you to go back. Goodness gracious, that's actually insane. Um, uh, as a delivery driver, I've seen a lot of places. Uh, just like little pop-up shops or retail stores and strip malls or something that I wouldn't normally go to. Uh, but it's really crazy the amount of pop culture and niche stuff that is just readily available in Houston. Like, you wouldn't expect so much, uh, what is it? Trading card game? T TCG stuff? Kindred. Or, like, anime stuff or Korean stuff like this or anything yeah. like that? But I have so much stuff bookmarked just because I've passed by through strip malls or, you know, just little... Yeah. Part, corners of the city where it's like oh i didn't know this was here i want to go here again yeah that's crazy that this was right there yeah well i think it's because it was called violet k-pop you did it didn't register on your true uh i'm gonna go back to this because it fills the whole picture <laughs> uh, yeah uh i i uh like i said i did take pictures of the k-pop section but they had a bunch of different albums uh mm-hmm I, oh, my niece is really big into Blackpink. We had a birthday party theme for her, Blackpink and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, Blackpink. She got, yeah. she got a Blackpink, a bunch of different Blackpink stuff, but she got a, one of the girls from that had a solo album. She actually got her album. Oh. Uh, which is kind of cool. Like She got, you know, all the stuff in it and everything. Uh, I wish I could have seen her open it, but she wanted to wait till she got home. <laughs> um contain the excitement and then we went to payway for lunch dinner whatever I, that was awesome i've only ever been a few times but you say it's really good i like it a lot yeah well i mean i had, you had it a lot of times mm -mm. i usually go to just panda but um i had payway one of the girls uh let me have some of their brown brown rice because they didn't want it no more oh, here yeah and since it was microwave it came out gross yep. And I did not like it very much. Well, like I said, we go here. Heck yeah. Pay away. Yeah, that, remember that, huh. leaving the hospital and you would see like Buffalo Wild Wings right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this is, it's across from... That's right crazy. There. Yeah. My God. Yeah, it sucked. Because, you know, re, re going down that road and everything. Yeah. Ooh, anyway. I, be, I bet Janie was emotional. No, she did. No. She, she, she's stronger than I am. <laughs> Uh, I think that's pretty much it for our week. Weeks. Yeah, I didn't really. Yeah, I think that's it for my week. I had a pretty good time. 
All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about Gotchard episode something. Uh, and we're going to dive into superhero time. We'll be right back. And we are back. Gotchard, let's go. Gotchard, episode 20. Smiling Angel. Ridiculous joke, which is a Spanish catchphrase. What a ridiculous joke. Uh, they showed the episode title like way later in the episode, and I yeah. want to start the discussion with that picture. Uh, Heck yeah. What did you think of the episode? I thought this was a strong episode, albeit very goofy and not as serious as they, as they wanted to come off as. Uh, only in uh, that it's Spanner's actor. No hate to him, but he is very comedic in this episode. Uh, the Spanner, the Spanner, the actor that plays Spanner, uh, Fuji Bayashi. Fuji Bayashi. Fuji Bayashi. Yasunari. God, I can't read. But yeah. Uh, he was good in this episode. It's just some parts were a little bit really funny. I don't know if you remember. Oh, yeah. I remember. Oh, yeah. Uh, I want to say that that feels like a common thing lately in Gotchard. Mm -hmm. Where the acting is kind of rough all around. Definitely. Uh, I don't I don't want to criticize Japanese acting too much because I don't know anything about it really. Uh but it just some of it feels really weird in this episode especially uh some of the choices and stuff this is also a choice that's weird uh him still like doing stuff like this to her yeah just the the touching, touching. Yeah. yeah no no bueno please and the other sister i don't know is she like jealous of it so it, it uh, what i'm thinking is it's more of a Jealous because of the attention, not jealous for like because she's getting it, it's more like she wants to have that same kind of attention from like a powerful person. Like she wants to be the, the one that gets the power up. From a big powerful bad. A big powerful man. Uh but yeah, she's she's totally jealous. Well what's weird is doesn't he say here something I'm gonna change this picture. <laughs> uh does it doesn't he say here something like seems like you you are useful or you you're impressing me something like that yeah like, you're you're becoming very resourceful or like he, he, says something like that. he says something he says a compliment but, in a very yeah, creepy way it, he he says it like like he found her and now there's like just now like oh actually you are pretty helpful or something like that yeah oh yeah yeah because he gives um atropos gives gray on the uh Plus, this card right here it says leads. oh you're becoming very useful to me or you're becoming increase increasingly useful to me increasingly i don't know it, it, something like that and it felt weird yeah because we see 10 years ago they were working together mm -hmm. so it's not like this is a new uh partnership right maybe he's surprised at how well she can get the cards because these are now cards that they're getting right that's the whole thing is that the the, the cards that were the new cards were being presented to presented in the show are being collected by the Abilla sisters. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's like surprised that they could catch them. I don't know. It could just be like a thing where they're really easily replaceable pawns and they're just like copies of like a previous version. There's like a Atropos from like. That could be it too. Copied. Remember, there is a thing that they could also be Kemi's themselves. Very true. We, that we, we hypothesized that from the very first episode. Did I? Did we? Yeah, you said that specifically. Oh. That you said, all right, these people are going to be chemis. They're going to go away in like a few episodes. Did I say that? Yeah. In a few episodes? Or like something. I said like in a few episodes, but you said they're definitely chemis. Uh, they're going to go away. You listen to this podcast? Of course. Yeah. I, I, I edit this podcast. Oh, yeah. I got to listen to it like four or five times. That was like 19 weeks ago. Yes, Don't it was. Because it was break. That was about 21 weeks ago. Like that. But yeah. Uh, um, We see... I know. Did you know we're coming up on our one year anniversary in two weeks? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. 
Wow. Yeah. Uh, and I wish we had an episode every week, but yeah, yeah, uh, life happened. <laughs> uh, but going back to this episode, it drops a lot of exposition that you're really just supposed to say, okay, sure, that happened. Yeah. Like too much. Yeah, that was an issue I had with this episode. But first, just because the picture is here, that's still a good guy. He definitely does not want to do any of this shit. For sure. He's he's doing what he needs to do to i guess maybe infiltrate or something um because in those flashbacks that we see in this episode or any flashbacks we see from the 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 stuff that's happening Monado's mm-hmm. never there nope but now he's helping the bad guy and the bad guy they're into the thing where he knows he's like trying to undermine him or something right and uh, in a previous podcast episode, I did say that they were classmates, but now, you know, we found out that the age differences between them and like how they interact, Grayon 10 years ago looked the same as he does now, yeah. but since they haven't shown Minato 10 years ago, oh. he could be just like a regular student there, a little bit older, but not as the same age as Grayon. So that was my mistake. Banana. Banagna. Banana. He's straight up minion. Banana. Yeah. Uh... No, but yeah, like this right here, this introduction of uh, Kyoka with Ichinose, very sudden, but very rightful in the fact that she needs to get this information for the drivers and all that. And she has, she's basically here in this episode, in this story, be like, hey, here's the story for Ichinose and their gang, because they don't know anything about Spanner's past or at all, uh, past at all. So she was there to inform us the audience and Ichinose's group and all that and that kind of came off as like man this came out of nowhere because this is Spanner he has a tragic history a tragic past yeah his parents are dead apparently he has some magic ability like he's been a magic boy this whole time it was a lot the prodigy apparently question mark uh, I hate that this dude wears a full-on tie every day uh <laughs> And a leather. It, I was about to say that. Yeah, a tie with uh, a leather jacket. That's no bueno. I know the episode. The episodes. The uh, the uh, uh, characters and stuff are, are planned out like a year and a half before the actual show comes out. Mm-hmm. Sometimes even closer to that because like uh, Stacy and Zenkaiger was sort of like a last minute character addition. Mm-hmm. Um. But this guy feels like they're trying so hard to make him a like a anti-hero dude that's cool and but also like pathetic because he keeps getting whooped recently. Recently, um, we got the stats. I'm just not into it. I know, right? I think I'm tired of this character, which is crazy because it seems like this is the common writer, right? I mean, he has that tragic backstory with the big bad. He has a special magic thing in him that makes him turn evil or whatever the hell. Are you going to I think God Charge will recover out of this guy, but. I mean, I see that, that definitely, but it seems like we feel like the community feels that he's such like a fraud because they really are like trying to put him up as like this greater character than what. <laughs> the audience perceives him as as a fraud. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I just like I said, I'm done with this character. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, I just hope that his character gets less edge when he gets his suit because right now he's all edge. His young parents. Yeah. I haven't named this episode of the podcast yet, mm-hmm. but I'm gonna try my best not to name it. All our parents are dead. Yeah, because that's the theme for this week. That's the theme for this week's superhero time. If you haven't seen Sentai yet, spoiler alert. Uh, well, I guess not really, because they are all dead. You know that already. <laughs> uh, yeah. So everything we just saw was before the the intro to the show, right? And then after the intro is the part where they show the cards that are featured in the episode which is a crazy amount of backstory and exposition and then the episode title so (laughs) all that before the actual episode title that's why i wanted to show this first 
I'm gonna do it again for King Oger. I think. Oh yeah, because King Oger has a really late intro. To, Does doesn't it? it? I thought it was like maybe five minutes in, and then we got the intro card. Oh, you know what? I maybe I have. I maybe did get the episode title for King Oger. Oh shoot. We'll see what we get there, won't we? Heck yeah. Uh, I'm very glad that he doesn't just get the driver. He has to do something for it. It's not just Kyoka's science alchemy that gets it to him. He needs like a thing. Like he needs to overcome something or he has to get through a certain traumatic history. Like Majid. Like Majid, exactly. I'm glad he's not just, hey, okay. I'm Kyoka. I can make these things and I can make another driver. Apparently. Here you go. It's not just that. It's like uh, it's only specific to Mad Wheel or Mock Wheel. Oh, yeah. And these two cards. Oni. Yeah. Mad Wheel and Dai Oni. So I'm glad that it's it's restrictive. Dai Oni Sista. Hell yeah. Uh, I think it's really, really weird. Really weird that this driver that the bad guys want so bad. She's just making another one. Yeah. I mean, I know it is restrict. Like, I don't know if it is restrictive or, or it's just made to work with only these two. Uh, but you know, he does need the igniter for it. So he has to do yes. something else mm -hmm. for that to make his own igniter. Uh, because we saw how Ichidose got his. Mm -hmm. It was from those goggles. And I don't know, maybe he's going to use the corpse of that lady. Mm. To make his uh, igniter. That would be interesting. That'd be sad. That'd be very sad, but it'd be very Weird. deserved. I don't know if that'd be cool at all. It, no, it would definitely not be cool, but it would add to the edge. What, would you, what, what so far from what we've seen? Oh, what? His tie. No. <laughs> the what? chessboard. Oh, the chessboard. He chess turned the chessboard into the new igniter. Mm-hmm. Uh, something that I guess was a very integral part to his character. Apparently. I know they've, we've seen him play it once. Mm -hmm. Maybe twice. No, once. Twice. Uh, yeah, so here here he's still part of the Academy. This is where the flashback. So my, my issue was mm -hmm. this flashback hits us hard. Yes. He, like, he realizes something about this flashback to make us go to a him being uh, gray on. Um, when I saw this flashback, I thought, oh, we'll get this in the next episode or we'll get this more fleshed out later. Mm -hmm. Nah, right here. No, right yeah. In this episode, it's like showing what happens. Uh, it feels like the, this episode, uh, right lately the episodes have been moving at a breakneck pace, uh, which I don't know, you can attribute that to the people complaining about how slow the, the, the season was, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't enjoy it that much. I don't think it's as earned as people think it 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 could be uh i get that it was like i said last time I, maybe a couple episodes ago this mm -hmm. felt like the kind of comic writer where we're seeing everything from the beginning but mm -hmm. it's not <laughs> because i mean we're getting flashbacks and stuff like this and everything uh so maybe they're injecting that kind of like past lore what lore is in past um mm -hmm. but yeah I, I don't know i just feel confused about the pacing i guess of the show yeah i definitely agree that this is moving at a crazy pace that isn't like how we're normally used to it uh just based on the past four episodes just because of majade happening last episode this episode being the uh main B b uh, being the main exposition and storytelling for Espana. Supana. I always say his name wrong. It's not Espana. S Spanner. Yeah, it's Supana. No, it's Spanner. He's uh, iCarly's brother. Carly's brother? Yeah. Spanner? Spencer. Oh, oh Spencer. Yeah. Spencer. Yeah. Spanner. No, uh, it's moving at a breakneck pace. This um, show has a very sick disease called the uh, two-parter disease. Yeah. Every episode for any topic or any situation has to be a two-parter. Except for Majade. Except for Majade. 
uh, which is a movie two-parter. Uh, that's again, that it's episode twenty of Gotchard, but I still can't help but compare it to uh, Geats. I enjoyed when Geats had arcs and mm-hmm. they were like labeled as such. As much as I clown on that weird reality TV show arc, yeah, that was a couple episodes. It wasn't just mm-hmm. a two-parter. Uh, this is another seat here. Like they're all so goddamn stupid. Like she says. I look like her face is so shocked and scared and yeah. everything. And they're like, what happened? She goes, well, Spanish parents are back. And they're like, yeah, that's cool, man. Awesome. But like her face is not at all doing that. No. It's it's very much uh, autistic. Yeah, a little bit. Like, yeah. They all four can't be like that. But they all four are. Like, but, oh, look yeah. at how happy. Uh, Abe, they're all smiling. God, maybe not Gotchard, but he's definitely the dumbest of them. Uh, oh, no, yeah, go, go, go ahead. Uh, this is also they're also all smiling because in the pre in the scene previous, uh, when Kyokasan shows the actual driver, Ichinose oh, yeah, is yeah, incredibly yeah. excited. He's like, "Oh, Spanner's gonna be a comrade too!" Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Yeah, even though Spanner's whole motivation for becoming a common rider is I- Ichinose saying. I'm the common writer. And he gets so sad and so sad. That is the whole thing. Because he wanted to be it from the beginning. True. Uh, ugh. Sorry, that was him smiling. He's so edge and I'm not used to that. Yeah, but uh, Ichinose and the gang are super excited for him to become a common writer. Which, uh, wasn't expecting that. But they'd be excited for him? Yeah. Why not? I thought they'd be kind of like... Oh, is he gonna be like a good common rider? Or is he gonna side? Or is he gonna side with the association? But no, they definitely are like he's one of us. Yeah, they don't they don't uh, associate a writer in a bad sense at all. True. There's no bad writers. It, well, is, not not yet. Is Dredd a writer? Yeah. Right, because he has a belt and he uses a card. Yeah, he's he's a uh, <coughs> his designation is common writer. Dread. Yeah. So okay, maybe he. Yeah, uh, but they're not gonna think he's bad because. No, yeah. Uh, yeah. That that's just what I. Oh, that's a great picture. I'll talk about that. Uh, that's just what I was thinking. But yeah. no, Ichino said definitely. He's like, we gotta help Spanner. He's one of us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's good. I'm glad that I was wrong about that. Uh, but this picture right here is very significant. Uh, we had a good chuckle about this. The sound effect that they used for this. Oh yeah. Is very appropriate. It's not very appropriate, but it, it's very, uh, it's good that they use the sound effect. That is like, it's like metal clashing, like cling. That's not how that sound makes at all. We were having a good laugh about that. Yeah, I, I, this was brutal. Toku Tony usually likes when there's more brutal scenes in Comrade. Yeah, I like when people get beat up. Uh, but it was funny they didn't use the appropriate sound effect for what it would sound like if a head hit a metal pole like that. <laughs> Uh, it should have been a gong. Yeah. <laughs> and it should have it should have sounded way worse, but after we made the note and talked about it while we were watching it, like, hey, you know, this is wrong sound. We thought about it and like, no, if they put that actual sound, it would have been terrible. It would have been so bad. Like traumatize the kids bad. Yeah, it would have like it would have made you feel shitty. Yeah. <laughs> like not bad like a bad job. Bad as in like, oh no, I don't wanna I don't wanna see this. Because it's not like he just he falls and he hits his head. The uh, amalgam here bonks his head twice on the metal pipe. So they're like, doom, doom. That would have been terrible to watch. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as Blastix was saying, I love when we get a little bit more gruesome and serious with the writers, uh, especially when we get like good beat ups like this, where he's he gets beaten in this episode pretty bad. This whole episode is just him getting just broken, broken down. Which is actually plot relevant because he has this black flame to him. Uh, Kuro something? I I forget how you say flame in Japanese. But Kuro is black. Kurogane Spanner. Kurogane Spanner. Oh, this is also significant. They're on Gold Dash. We get some motorcycle scenes. More than um, Saber, please. Please, God. Oh, and this is just torture for Spanner. The uh, Grayon 
This is his torture porn. With, yeah, with the amalgam, uh, which is angel lead. Amalgam. Yeah, with... Oh, yeah, amalgam. Angel lead. They bring back Spanner's dead parents just for Grayon to torture them and kill them to bring out Spanner's black flames. Invitation. Yeah. And it definitely works. Spanner is controlled by the edge and uh, in an attempt to save or help Spanner, Mad Wheel comes out, shows a motion for Spanner, tries to save him and turns him into the Malgum. I see it. Oh, what, what what theme song is that? Is that Almighty? No. <laughs> to rest to last, that's the one. Oh, right. Uh, this was also another funny moment. That was not supposed to be funny. Uh, Spinner's parents die, and his reaction is just, Oh! oh. No. The joke, the what made me laugh about it was, they're they're dissolving into sand uh -huh. in front of him, not quickly, but not fast either. It's just you know happening. Mm -hmm. It isn't until they're completely gone that he goes, <gasps> <laughs> like it's like it's shocking. Not until it's over, like right. as it's happening. No, oh, no, 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 and then it happens. He goes. <gasps> I didn't, I didn't expect that. Whoa. <laughs> that's the that's the face here. That's why I thought it was funny because like you you didn't realize what happened until the very end when it happened. It was just, uh -huh. it was just weird. I thought it was funny because for me personally in my own life, I do that sound a lot. Like, oh, as like a joke, like very satirical, like, oh, how dare you? And he did it for like a very serious moment. And I thought that's hilarious. Uh, uh, this Malgum is pretty cool looking. I do like that it's taking the 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 mask, and that's kind of how it is. But it is weird that like the Malgum is of a not writer, I guess technically suit that's corrupted. Yeah, he kind of looks like he could be a another. That's what I thought. That, another Valvar Valvarad. Yeah, that that's definitely what I thought that they were going for, like another Valvarad. But. Is it though? No. Yeah, right. Is that the, what they were going for? I thought this is what they were going no, for. No, because this has the gold shit. True, 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 true. But yeah, the amalgam, the amalgam hand takes off the mask. It looks really cool. Yeah. And then there he is with his black flames. Oh, he goes to Kyoka, and it's revealed that you know, uh, Spanner saw his parents die, and Kyoka took him in. And erase his memories, you know, so that he'd forget. But the memory of him seeing that still traumatized him, even though he had forgotten the memory. Just the sheer emotion of it, since Spenner's such a magic boy, he uh, he got it again. He got all the emotions again. Yeah, that explains the scar. Yeah, I get that. I guess there's only, there's not only, but there's 28 episodes left. In four episodes, we'll be halfway through the series. Yes. It still feels like questions are being answered way too fast. Right. Like, for this specifically, I didn't really care about the scar that she had that was shown once and that didn't have any, like, oh, where did this come from? That's what I look at all the time. And it, it, it's focused. It, yeah, it's, it, it's focused for sure, but it's like... This is such like a thing because he definitely forgot about this. No, he brought it up. Yeah. Oh, he forgot about this incident because yeah. his memory was erased. Yeah, yeah, right. So like, and he he was concerned about the scar beforehand, but did he know that he'd do it, or was it like a thing like he he she said that he did it and he just forgot, so he like feels guilt for that. But you're you're right. This is definitely a question that was answered a little too quickly. Like some other things. Uh. Yeah. Trauma boy. T tortured boy. Looks like a J-drama. Yeah. What this is. Definitely. 
And then, yeah, he played chess a lot. I don't know. I feel like if chess was a more bigger part of his life, he would maybe incorporate it with. Maybe that's why he wears that nerdy ass tie. Because <laughs> he's a chess this nerd? Because of chess. No, no, no. You're, you're right. He would have incorporated a lot more into his life because Kyokasan is was telling him, I taught you chess. That's like one of the main things that she said. Be, so that you could like think about your moves and not be so brash with everything because, you know, the black flames will consume him, I guess. So she says, yeah, I taught you chess so that you could, you know, think out your moves, play the long game and develop yourself. Because I didn't know if you'd be able to handle the black flame. And you'd think that him learning chess since he was a child to now, his... Catchphrase wouldn't be, what a ridiculous joke. It'd be like, I'm the king of this game or something. You know, yeah, like how you said, he'd incorporate chess more into his life. And yeah, his, th- in his I mean, yeah. Cool, uh, little henchin time here. Um, God damn it, her suit. I'm so mad that they debuted her suit on the show in a garage. Yeah. Uh, because this suit definitely looks way better out in the air in the sunlight in the public mm-hmm. uh, this version of this exposure of her looks way better than last episode so much better uh dark purple flames boy edge and the, the episode ends with him basically dismissing uh the lady yeah like don't don't ever let me see your face again uh and he's here to fight everybody yeah, he's here. He's sort of give it up, but he's gonna be a bad guy. Mm-hmm. He he knows he has this power or whatever. Right, he knows he has this power and that he's a prodigy and that he can do whatever he wants. So he says, you know, f it. I'm just gonna be fighting everybody because he's the edge boy. Uh, I do like though. <clears throat> I do like though that the amalgam design, the head, isn't just like a tire, which is what I thought was gonna happen. Uh, for like amalgam of this character for this <coughs> for this card it'd just be like a tire with his head with that spike right there I'm glad that that's not his head that it's its arm but uh, we'll see this V8 engine later on uh, because oh, it's chest? yeah because it's actually his chest piece yeah. for his new Kamen Rider Valverad suit uh, no mask though that's gone forever I wonder if that has any significance like the amalgam has it and like when he turns to Rider when he when the amalgam gets destroyed, it crushes the mask. I don't know. That's just me thinking. Yeah. But overall, this episode was, ooh, a lot. I thought it was a strong episode, but it definitely could have held off on the exposition and the answering questions. And I know that's kind of hypocritical because that's what we always say is that we want to answer these questions, but I feel like it did it in a not good way. Or not a way that I think I would have liked. I just want more... More nuance to what we're seeing. Uh, It feels immediately stated. Uh, But we'll see. I mean, like I said, there's still maybe 28 to 30 episodes left of the show. Uh... What other questions are there? Like, Ichidose's dad. Uh, 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 Kudo. The Kudo Fuda. Fuga. The oh, dad. dad uh, Rede's dad. Yeah. Where he is and how he got the belt. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, there's, I guess there's some stuff, but. I think that's like the only one, though. Another thing I think we mentioned it last week is uh, the uniform. The little <laughs> yeah. girl was wearing it this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When she got the thing, so maybe you have to wear it because when the older sister came in last episode, she was wearing the uniform. Mm-hmm. So maybe you have to wear the uniform to catch Cami. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I do want to see where that um, because they're definitely setting up some infight infighting stuff against Atropos and Lachesis. You know, with Lachesis wanting the attention from Grayon. Or, like, wanting some uh, gratitude from Grayon. Yeah. So, we'll see. Uh, we'll yeah. see. 
right now uh Kyle Ryder and Gotchard is okay I don't I don't I don't mind it uh maybe the movie is what we should have seen to like really fall in love with it but Mm -hmm. we don't have that option no uh i give this episode seven mad wheels out of ten cool very solid just a little too much a little too wordy but i liked it we're gonna take a quick break when we come back we're gonna talk about keek oger I don't think any of that caught. No, nice. We're back. King of your time. Woo! You are the king. You are the king. You are the king. King of your episode 46. Know the beauty of life. Yeah. Um... This was a great episode. Uh, it was watching it live got me very emotional. Uh, yeah, you were telling me about that. Yeah, I didn't get an emotional watch like watching it the second time, but I think the first time it hit hard. Or it, it hit better for the first time. Um, but it is it, it's like dealing with death, like accepting it and everything. Mm-hmm. It's it's like uh, dealing with your own mortality. Yeah, it, it, in more ways than one. Yeah. Um, Ran wanted to use the power of immortality to have people live longer and everything, mm-hmm. and maybe even she was like, maybe even bringing back, bringing back, bringing people back. Uh, excuse me. Whoa, which means she still has to let go of her mo- her parents. You know. Yeah. Um, her parents demise. Uh, we also find out that Jeremy, his god power. Is immortality. <laughs> that was and so unexpected. And he doesn't have it anymore. He lost it. Right, yeah. <laughs> he, <laughs> Spoiler alert. He lost his one inherited gift. Yeah. But for a good reason. For a very uh Well, at the end of this episode, was it? I oh, think it was, because it's gonna happen next episode. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about what we thought the next couple episodes were going to be about, and uh, none of us thought that Grody would get a two-parter. Uh, none of us. Neither of us thought he'd be getting a two-parter. Yeah, that was a surprise for I sure. I appreciate it. I appreciate him getting a two-parter. Uh, he does have more stakes here, or at stake. He's He has personal connections to, like, all of them. Yeah, no, no, yeah. Not it's- Yanma. Not specifically, just because Yanma's or Gira. Yanma wasn't really involved with the um, Fury of the Gods, but yeah, all the King Elders have like a specific. Oh yeah, well actually, Fury of the Gods thing about yeah. them, and that's all of because of Grody. Well, no, Grody. It was a uh, Doug Dad. Well, yeah, Fury of the Gods, but Grody. Uh, Dang, what did Grody do? He killed him and his parents. No, but like, he can he he controls the cicadas, right? The dead woods. That's right. That's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. Uh, but yeah, Kagaragi brought back the lady Rita, uh, the past sovereign, uh, Spider Man, his mom. Mm-hmm. So it's traumatizing, and it makes sense that he has more more meat to 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 bite on 46 so we have four more episodes left oh my goodness uh let's see next one's gonna be grody so 47 grody 48 49 50 Ooh. I, th- I do think wise all either gets one episode or he gets killed off in the next one grody mm-hmm. uh, not grody uh did i, did I say wise all yeah it's not wise all no it's not wise all at all but you know what I mean. Uh, he plays Neurogen. the same. He plays the same. Kind of, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think he's going to get a one episode where he gets dealt with. Uh, and then who's left to show off their power? Anybody? No. We no, already that's got, it, huh? Yeah. Uh, Minonga was just the hollow corpse. Grody is his. No, not them. Who? Them. The Kyogers. Their powers. 
Uh, Everybody's showed their powers. Yeah, everyone. Well, I mean, not. What's uh, what's Gira's power? I don't know. Like a gold shield. Oh, you know what? Gira wouldn't have the power. What's his name? Would. Rackless. Yeah, Rackless. Why? Because he has the Ultra Caliber Zero. That has something to do with it, doesn't it? No. Ultra Caliber Zero? No. No. Oh, because the symbol? Yeah, because the symbol. No, the symbol is the crowd for Sugada. Remember? Oh, that's right. But uh, I think You're his, right. his thing is the 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 golden aura shield. Whenever they were in King Oger, it was him and Yanma. Mm -hmm. Yanma had the lightning powers. I don't really get what. Rans is is it crystal crystallization? So the I don't know. It is. It's that she could she she cuts anything and she takes life of it. Yes, but like I guess that's part of it is that she could crystallize a life even without her suit. Right. <clears throat> uh, it's like they didn't. Uh, I was expecting like a a really clear like here's this here's this here's this explanation of every king oger but i'm glad that we got like episodic for this because i didn't expect uh, rans to be so poetic and that she is a doctor and her power is that she kills instantly yeah anything that she touches with that scythe yeah or cuts instantly dies uh, she 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 doesn't like it either she calls it that would it right what do you use this disgusting power i think she says mm -hmm. Which is damn. That's powerful. And she's the only King Oger that has a power like that. All of the rest of them are like, hell yeah, my power, hell yeah. She's like, oh, Jesus, this is terrible. Which I think really adds to her character's suffering uh, in a good way. Yeah. Uh, I like, excuse me, I like shots like these where just before it was all of them together. I think even. They were no, well, they were all in their suits, and then when she does decides to do this thing, she powers down. Mm -hmm. um, but I like shots like this where it's all the suit actors, and then one face actor. Oh, uh, that's cool. Because I don't know. I think uh, this is something lost in American American action shows, action superhero shows. Uh, how well the acting in the suit and the out of suit blends. Mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 well, that's one of my absolute favorite things about Go Kaiju, which a lot of people's favorites, is how well the acting of the person in the suit is like the exact same as the person out of the suit. Mm -hmm. So you don't even question if it's the same person or not. It just is right the same person. They 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 are Luca Melfi or whatever. Which was, uh, it shows. It goes to show that this is like a really talented effort that all of the suit actors are doing because whenever I first started watching uh, Super Sentai, I would always question uh, Blastex, are they really in the suits? Is that Are there are the people there? Are, do they have all the suits on and they only use the sun actors or the, the suit actors for like the stunts? But no, it's like the mannerisms are always set and it's not like a set thing where like this suit actor gets the girl and then they have all the same mannerisms as Luca as a uh, Kaho, you know, whoever, but, uh, takes a lot of skill. Who? Kaho? Like, I don't know. I was just saying a Japanese name. Oh <laughs> yeah. Kaho was the one that came to mind first. Should be a Kaho. Who's that? She's a, <laughs> uh, she's a YouTuber. She does a lot of stuff with Sea Dog VA. She's a retired. Okay. Jab. No, we're done. We're done. We're done. <laughs> yeah. She, uh, she has a lot of YouTube stuff now. Cool. cool. Uh, let's go back to the episode. Yes. Uh, a lot of face acting in this. Uh, and I mentioned it before. It's unfair to look at this and got chart uh, because these guys have been doing it for so much longer. Right. The acting is always on point in King Oger. Peak Oger. It's like a lot of people like to call it. Uh, this was fun <laughs> where he swapped about and just like wiped his bitch ass instead. Including the uh, the secondary cast and the villains, they have really good acting, especially with Grody here being a uh, a voice actor as well. He does an amazing job at physically portraying his character. He uh, was a copywriter. He was uh, Outsiders. He was just in that. Oh, he's also like a the show. What? He's Garen. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's coming right to Garen. Yeah. And he was just in, uh, he just got a new suit upgrade in, yeah. in uh, Outsiders. Very uh, good for him. I just like these shots when they all get to be together. I love that little detail in the background. See that? Yeah, she went, to, she went shopping. Yeah. Implied that they both fucking live in that cage. <laughs> um, this was cool because, I don't know, it's it's still reckless having stuff to tell them, but he's still being secret about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still really scared he's going to turn out of nowhere. Uh, this would seem pretty genuine. Uh, talk about shallow graves. Oh my god. You could have dug deeper. Dug dead. Uh, all the cicadas back there. Yeah, this is... Uh, oh god, they have a name for it. I forget. But this is the tombstone of the uh, cicada fireflies. And they have a little memorial right there for candles and all that. But... Uh, Jeremy's teaching the the Bugnarok grave rituals so that they'll ha become a habit of doing it so that they'll become more sensitive to death. You should have for life. There you go. Uh, Which is a good sentiment. And yeah. you know, they're t Jeremy's teaching the, the Bugnarok but you know, it's really for the kids. So it's really like, you know, appreciate your life. Body horror. Good morning, kids. We've never seen Jeremy outside of this suit. Do you like how we've seen even, all the... Even when we went to Kill You, Your Planet, mm -hmm. Jeremy was the only one who didn't get a costume change. Yeah. Literally. Uh. Which uh, we understand now what that is. Yeah, why that is. Because he looks like a monster all the way through. He's... <laughs> underneath. He won the lottery, man. His whole body, spider body, and his right arm. Because I always thought it was just his right arm. But it turns out it's like his whole spider body. And only his left arm and his face is not Spider-Man. His legs might also be spider. Ugh. Gross. Uh, this is, again, they get deep and like, you know, is life worth living if you're immortal and stuff like that? And this, this scene specifically got emotional just because it triggered ran in such a way uh uh gira says to ran i because they're about to do experiments gira says to ran i didn't ask to be immortal yeah in like a very like uh please no kind yeah. of way and ran says don't ever oh God. say that again yeah because you could uh have something in you that could stop any medicine uh, be the cure for any medicine make everyone immortal or bring people back from the dead yeah and it really hits hard for Rita because that's like her Rita. whole motivation oh ran for her, her whole motivation yeah it's a really really touching moment and you feel it too it, the the sound the sound design of this episode is really nice because everything of the scenes hit where things need to be silent they are everything needs to be uplifting music it hammers at home uh, Jeremy gets uh, scared because she's trying to figure out immortality, the power of it. And I think they do figure it out. They're like, what do they want to do with it? Uh, so they both have their little flashbacks of their dead parents. <laughs> Sad times. Yeah. I'm not going to name this episode that, I promise. Um,. Yeah, he goes crazy because he realizes his whole purpose is to kill. Oh, that's right. Um, so Rita cuts into him, and Rita's ability is that... R Ran. Ran, sorry. Ran cuts into him, and Ran's ability is that anything that they cut, uh, it dies, right? It takes out all the life. Grody doesn't die, which is his whole, like, he wants to die. And we learn that Grody is the same sort of being as Gira. He has eaten so many uh, Shoe God souls that he's lost all of his memory of anything else in the past. And he's essentially a killing machine for Doug Dead. Uh, Doug Dead says in the episodes, yeah, you're a killing machine and you won't be satiated until everything's dead. So you pretty much have to create. No, you pretty much have to make the whole universe a graveyard. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder what's going to happen with. Garrow Jim. 
Gerojib? Gerojib. Gerojib. Who? Uh, oh, Weisel. No, Gerojib is the name of uh, ASMR code. What's the name of the other guy? Oh, yeah, Ger uh, Jim. Kamijin. Kamijin. Kamijin and Gerojim. Kamijib. Yeah, Gero Jim. Jim. Cool. The um the phantom that's everywhere and nowhere. Yeah. Oh, that's a good moment too for a character that I hate. A really good moment for them. None of that got picked None up. None of that got picked up. I was whispering guy. Here, here, here. Watch. Where he talks like a whisper. And it's so annoying. Sorry for if you're driving. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, this looks really nice. I really like this shot. And then they get a close up and you see the fucking green screen. I'm so, uh, the <laughs> but this right here looks nice. She's visiting her parents' graves. Yeah, we got a rare sighting of Ishibana. This is uh, DX jump scare. Pre I think this is a Prima Bandai. This black or navy blue mm -hmm. uh, tarantula toy. Mm -hmm. Reminds you that you, you don't have it. Did you need it? Uh... Yeah, so here's Gero Jimmy's back. Uh, the way he talks to him makes it feel like he's a favorite of his imagination. But he's he is real and not real at the same time. I don't really get his deal, but yeah, I get it. It's like he's supposed to represent the the spirit of the Bugnarok. He's everywhere, and nowhere. He is a gym, so he's like he has an official. He's up there in the ranks, but he's also like, he speaks for everyone and he's a shapeshifter so he can be anyone. He's supposed to be like the spirit of Bugnarok, but, uh, it just comes off a little weird, but I do like him as a character and it's a very sentimental moment because he says to Jeremy, because Jeremy's having a morbid reflection of his own life and his own motivations, uh, he, uh, Gero Jim says, well, I'm basically a phantom. I'm everywhere and nowhere. So wherever you go, Jeremy, I'll always be with you. That's a very touching moment. And I do like that. I like that a lot. <sighs> yes. Sorry. If you're driving. Uh, <laughs> this was cool. I didn't mention it while we were watching it. Uh, but when I was getting the pictures, fucking out of suit fighting. Let's go. Oh, I didn't notice Everybody that. Everybody does it all six of them and because it's moving very fast boy uh it's gonna be a lot of blur and not really good pictures but everybody takes part in some out of suit fighting which is my favorite thing in sentai um there's something you see more in sentai than you do in writer uh where you they actually put the the the, the actors in sentai to work and we don't really get a lot of that this season because a lot of it is um mm -hmm green screen yeah where they where they go so it doesn't really matter in devoid uh and so they they end up fighting in suit suited a lot uh and then don brothers didn't really get that a lot because uh, Don brothers i don't really have a <laughs> reason for that yeah they yeah, didn't really fight no mom. uh but hopefully we'll see more of that in boom boonger like i said we saw a leaked photo set and they are in the streets doing stuff so Hopefully. Oh yeah, and this was a touching moment too. Where uh as they're fighting everyone and Grody brings all of the past uh Bugnarok back from the dead, including the generals, uh -huh. which in the beginning of the series were like mini bosses, right? So it took them a minute to get to that point to where they could beat him as a team. And now we see the progression of their back as dead things. And they can just beat them solo. And yeah. they do it twice. And they're very f sorry about that. They say, uh, Kagaragi specifically says, I'm sorry, before he destroys uh, the uh, the digger, uh, Bugnarok. Very touching. This episode is a lot about uh, mortality. Yeah. That's a lot. This is cool. This was a cool sequence. The fight was really nice. This looked kind of ridiculous. <laughs> uh, but that's fine. Uh, and then they had this little speech. Oof. 
You see how you see how you see do you see how they're like on one side of the screen? Right. But there's shit on the other side so you can see other things as well. Right. For both of them. Are you talking about last week's episode? Yes, I'm talking about last <laughs> week's episode. Where uh Renee was talking to Atropos. Uh -huh. Yeah, Atropos. And they were literally in the same like You see in the same space. That's exactly what did you do you remember the rest of that conversation? Oh, anime? oh but, yeah. Yeah, that it was trying to be like anime. Yeah, that I said it was trying to be like anime where like they have their face right there yeah. and then the other side could be just like a close up of their face. Yeah. And you said, No, dude, they're, they're, it's bullshit. I, th I said you're giving it too much credit. You're putting your own want to it. Yeah. Your I'm, own what you think or what it, sh it should be. Yeah, like I'm trying to fix the bullshit. Uh, yeah. But this just outright does this it. Straight up, yeah, that. Magnificently. It's, uh, it's like again like they've been doing it for 40 40 plus episodes and uh, they have one writer this whole time who who has a vision uh, yeah they pulled it off great i love it i don't know how the hell he was able to incorporate kyoyujur in here but he did uh so good it's so good and she takes out his immortality and they shoot it bang and he becomes uh alive again oh and they have this serious but they're crying yeah they're crying for real like this, is, this isn't like fake this is real they're emotional oh well, it's fake but yeah it's uh because they're acting <laughs> uh i like it's not it's not like meant to be a joke but i took it as one or he's like even now oh he says you can go back to be just a girl mm -hmm. you can just cry if you want to and she's like what had ruined my makeup and he says well i guess i shouldn't cry either <laughs> implying that he's also wearing makeup he's and wearing like, oh you're right girl i'm not gonna mess with my makeup either <laughs> uh i thought that was funny because i think he has i mean of course right he i has, mean of like, course the, i mean the, red the eyeshadow or something go 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 to the picture before the the one before that the the close-up the anime shot of his face oh i mean come on yeah he has uh, all those beauty marks highlighter no that's supposed to be like tattoos i think not tattoos but like Marking. Oh, I see. I see. No, yeah, yeah for sure. Like that, he has but the red eyeshadow. Uh huh. That probably is part of it, but again, yeah, it would mess up my makeup. Uh, <laughs> and also, that's a good. That's a good shot. Uh, but the, they're crying because <laughs> what? You, you, the, what we take from this scene is so like important. Yeah, they're sad because they they're sort of facing mortality. Uh. They're taking immortality away, this gift that, like, like Rand was saying, like they could heal and cure a lot of stuff. Uh, but they're doing it to stop this guy forever, hopefully. And uh, Jeremy is deciding he's gonna grow old. Like that's what that was one of my favorite lines he gives to Garrow Jim, mm -hmm. is that he wants to grow old with the rest of the King Ogers. Right. Uh, and she says that to to Gira too that he is gonna grow old as well. He is still human, right? He didn't consume enough shoe god. Yeah, but even though he he is Darth Vader, straight up. Uh, this was sad too. Like they've beaten these guys before, but the way they do it here is like emotional. Yeah. Uh, but this was sick. The way Gira like ducks down and gets him in his side, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's like a bait and switch where that you think he didn't get him, but then yeah. it, it sides up, and then oh it's Jesus! Yeah. <gasps> uh, <laughs> Grody doing his best banner impression. Uh, no, he's back to life because uh, he was dead already, but he wasn't. He's not immortal. He just oh, he's dead. Right. Yeah, he's dead. And his power resurrects, and his power he was using on himself to resurrect dead. So. They took the immortality from Jeremy, gave it to him, so that canceled out him being dead. So now he's alive. Now she can kill him. Right. Yeah. Or they can kill him. Which makes sense. Um, we get another wrath of oh fury of the gods, fury of the the cicada. Uh, in this, I think Sonic Six City. This seems like more like Sonic Adventure One. It's it's uh. It is Ishibata, mm -hmm. but uh, yikes. <laughs> That's a better shot. Uh, 
yeah, I like this episode. Again, four episodes left. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm ready. Yeah. Um, do you want to know the name of the next episode? Go for it. All right. So episode 47, Silence God. In the description, uh, this is the 47th episode of King Oger. Uh, this is the first part of the King Oger Endgame. Ooh. Which, so four episodes. Yeah, which, like, no shit. Come on. Uh, do you want to know the synopsis? Or no, it's too much. No, we'll wait. Okay. I'll wait. Uh, yeah, I like this episode a lot. Let's go. I've been saying it every week. Uh, I'm shocked we still haven't really seen anything for Boom Boonger outside of like a couple pictures. Uh, I really, really, really want to get a trailer so we get a, a, a sense of the show. Uh, I heard that we're going to get the trailer and talk show introducing the actors and everything two weeks before the show starts so that should be two weeks from now heck yeah something to look forward to just on that something to look forward to in two weeks uh toku shoutsu oh yeah just posted something on the instagram today which i'm very excited for i should have put this in here but yeah it's it's kind of a weird picture but it, it you know it tracks mystery is on the wind mystery yeah. writer week february 12th through the 18th and in the bottom text, and discover the new writer series coming to Toku Shoutsu, Valentine's Day, 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific time. Double. You think so? Yes. Okay. Is that what everyone's been saying? Some people are betting on it to be double. Mm -hmm. You know why, right? No, why? Mystery. Wind. Mystery writer week. Mystery is, in, is on the wind. That is very true. Yeah. The... <coughs> those who don't know double takes place in the windy city chicago oh chicago yes and uh no it's called windy city and, and their whole thing is that they're detectives you know mystery yes uh yeah i'm excited I, for that i kind of hope it isn't just because that's so on the nose <laughs> uh maybe it's like zeo maybe they're planning these two weeks to do a teaser every week like first one's this one uh -huh. tomorrow's gonna be like "Ooh, get excited or something like that and then <laughs> the next week the next one will be like uh, -huh. uh i don't know get ready for uh expect i don't know i don't know they could do more things like that right. make make space on your shelf for this i get it dvd <laughs> I, I, that's the only thing like it could i, I hope it could be because it can't be decade Mm -mm. Although that would be nice because uh, O's is after decade. I'm sorry, O's. Uh, double is after decade. I definitely think this is cooling into de uh, to double. Mm -hmm. uh, but we'll see. My initial thought, uh, because the picture includes... Um, cool, I got an Oger. No. It's a red uh, Ichigo. It's the original suit. Uh, I was just thinking it was going to be an old rider. Maybe Z-O yeah. or Sky Rider. Or because uh, I was thinking, which kind of nulls it out. I just read new writer series, not a new writer movie, which would cancel out J and Z O or uh, Z Cross. Uh, this would also be the first, and as much as people don't like the term, uh, Neo Heisei. Right. Yeah. This would be uh, Neo Heisei number one, which would be year eleven of Heisei. This. Of like how they consider Heisei and the Neo Heisei. Mm -hmm. uh, because there is a Heisei writer. There's two Heisei writers already on Tokushatsu. Yep. One, Reiwa. Mm -hmm. And then no no Neo Heisei. One Showa. One Showa, the original. One Heisei, one Neo. No Neo Heisei. Two Heisei. Two Heiseis. Oh man, I can't. If it's double, I'm going to be very excited because I know very little about double. Oh, I've started it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm excited for that. Uh, King Oger, though, I give King. I give this episode 45 Mofans out of 12. Wow, this is a weird number. That is uh, almost four full. Four full Mofan. Yes. Uh, I think that's it. We're going to get out of here because I'm really sick. We did a podcast? 
Yeah. While you're sick? Yeah. I have a super blast X. Catch me everywhere. TikTok. YouTube. Instagram. Please follow me. Twitter. Um, I might need your help soon, guys. Yeah. Thank you. I have a super blast X. And I have been Toku Tony. You can catch me everywhere at Toku Tony. YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Toku. I mean, TikTok. Everywhere at Toku Tony, except for Twitter. I, I was wrong. On Twitter, I am Tony Toku, unfortunately. Still can't get that name. Uh, go check out my stuff if you can, if you want, if you really, really want to. Uh, and like, comment, subscribe, interact with us, please. We want to hear from you. Thank you very much. See you next week, guys. Bye.